Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's been a crazy day, all right? XRP holders were devastated this morning when prices looked to be going down, but I think things are already clearing up a little bit, and people are a little bit more happy knowing what I've said before as well that we're just buying like crazy and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. I'm still ridiculously positive. Also, I've seen some guys say, well, this means we're going to shoot to the moon today or tomorrow or one of these days. Not necessarily true. We can fall down a little bit lower as well to about 42 cents or so was my own prediction. However, once more, guys, I am not afraid. I'm still holding and I'm holding very, very strong. And I'm, <laughs> I'm actually very, very ecstatic, if that's the right word, right now about the situation. Also, guys, as some of you already know, we are giving away 250 XRP the first time that a video hits 1,500 likes within 24 hours. If you want to enter, three simple steps. Make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed, and make sure you comment something down below. And also, if you don't want to enter, you can also do those things by just or for just helping out. Right? It helps out the channel because I think the YouTube algorithm likes the likes and stuff like that. Then, first thing of today... 250 million XRP sent by BitGo to SBI's crypto lending platform. And I I've thought about this for a little while. I've thought about what the potential reasonings could be. And there's quite a lot of them, which, again, cannot be verified. However, I've thought about one specific thing that you guys should understand as well. And it actually doesn't have anything to do with this specific exchange, but with the fact that we cannot ever really know what they're doing this for, mostly because of this, right? There could be three things happening here. One is BitGo is sending this money to SBI's crypto lending platform because SBI demanded it. SBI bought it over there and they want the, 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 the money to be transferred from there to here. That's one thing that can happen. Second thing is a whale on BitGo, for example, maybe a huge guy, wants to just sell his XRP, which would be kind of strange because why wouldn't you then do it on BitGo? But he wants to sell that on SBI's crypto lending platform. Maybe you can also sell on that specific platform. I don't actually know if you can even do that, but that's why they've sent it there. I mean, I don't know if it's officially the same thing as SBI VC trade in the sense that you can also trade on there or because it is from SBI VC trade that you, nah, but let's say you can trade on both of these that he's transferred over to trade his XRP on there could be. Or, or to even lend it on there, could also be, or something along those lines. The third one, though, is something I've recently thought about, which is why you can never really know what these transactions are for, because let's say we have two parties. For example, Western Union and Ripple, right? Let's just arbitrarily pick those, or just pick two that you most likely know. Now, it could be, for example, that Ripple, if they're sending out 100 million XRP, that they want to do one of the first things, or first two things we just said, but it could also be that they're doing a third option, which is Ripple as an entity sending money from their wallet to another exchange. For example, let's say Bitthumb or Poloniex, Bifinex, doesn't matter, Bitrue, whatever exchange. And they're not doing that to sell themselves. They're not doing that for any of those reasons. They're doing that because they are sending money to Western Union who only has a wallet on that exchange. And the thing is, you know, you're going to have to look at the, the specifics of an account to see exactly what is being sent to. But if it just says it's being sent, for example, from Ripple to Bitthumb, you don't actually know if it's being sent to Bitthumb themselves to maybe add for their liquidity or something like that, or if it's being sent to a specific person in Bitthumb, or if it's being sent to a specific company in Bitthumb, right? There's so many things that could happen when they're sending money around, which is why you shouldn't just think that this is some bad thing or some good thing, because it, it may be either. We don't really know. And it's also very, very difficult to see whether or not they've sold if it's being done on an exchange. Yeah, it's generally pretty annoying to figure all this stuff out. I mean, for example, we could have also had it where Ripple is sending money to a, a miscellaneous wallet. And that could have been just them transferring their money to a different wallet that they own. But it could have also been a sale. It could have also been an OTC sale where they send XRP away. Right? Again, they would take it from specific wallets if it's an OTC sale. But you guys get the picture. It could have been so where... They just send the money somewhere and they get money in dollars back from those guys to their bank account. But we don't see those. You guys get the picture? So that's something important to understand as well. By the way, guys, check out Growth Masters Academy, my second channel. And also, if you're from the U.S., make sure you check out Webull. Link down below. You can get four free stocks, I think, to the end of the year. Uh, there was first a promotion for like a couple more days. And 
then I think they, they expanded it to the end of the year. If you make an account, you get two free stocks. If you deposit $100, I think you get two more free stocks. In total, I think at maximum worth $3,000. So it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, link down below. And then again, this one is just another cool channel of mine about making money on Instagram and passive income and some active income. It's pretty cool. Then why it will be a bumpy road ahead for holders and day traders. The thing is, guys, this is always the case. Holders are almost always the easiest guys to take profits. However, it can always be difficult for them too if prices go up and down, up and down, or, or have some crazy volatility. As, as a holder, you always want to get yourself the best purchase price. And I mean, as a trader, you want to get yourself a, a, a good volatile move where you are on the right side of things. But as a holder, you want the nicest purchasing price. So you want to get the biggest dip, right? And the thing is, if some guys are expecting the prices to move downwards for the next couple of weeks, you actually have to either wait a long time to buy more coins or your stash is going to look, you know, devalued for a little while. Or every time you purchase, the price just goes down lower and it, it looks like you're a freaking moron just losing money constantly. <laughs> both are not that nice and for day traders if it's very volatile it can be a nice thing it could also be a, a a very bad thing depending on of course what your strategy is the article here though completely useless we're talking mostly about a liquidity crisis right now i'm going to be talking a little bit more about that later as i think it's a very very dire situation but again i'll talk about that a little bit later now here's once more why i'm so bullish on holding and why I think everything will be fine. I, I've tried to explain it a couple of times already, and I'm still going to be doing that a couple more times because I, I need to express to people why holding is most likely a lot better than trading unless you really know what you're doing and you're planning to sit behind your computer for hours upon end on a day or, or again, you really have done your own due diligence. Otherwise, if you don't really have that much money, you don't really want to risk it. You just want to kind of, you know, grab some coins and be done. Just live a happy life on the side. Not, no stress in that sense of your, your money being down. The thing is, guys, with holding, you still always have your amount of coins and nothing's going to change on the valuation. With trading, you can actually really decrease your amount of coins as well if you mess up. However, to move further, uh, further, one of the most positive things we've just read was this from MicroStrategy, that they're ready to buy a huge sum of crypto once more. They already have like $400 million in crypto or in Bitcoin specifically. Right now, they're planning to buy another huge amount of Bitcoin. And the thing is, there's a lot of discussions right now about what exactly is happening to MicroStrategy. Is it an investment company or stuff like that? I have another article open somewhere, maybe not in this video, but I have it open already, about explaining that, yes, it is actually being talked about quite a lot. However, it is not an investment company as Bitcoin are not securities. And it's a pretty crazy situation. It's a pretty crazy situation if you're asking me, right? These companies, they know more than we do. But we're not seeing it just quite yet, all right? These guys, they're not buying for no reason. They are taking loans, so to speak, to buy more crypto. You think that's you think that's because they are risking the biscuit? No. These guys know. These guys know. Grayscale, Square, PayPal, they're all buying like, like freaking maniacs. These guys want to be in on the party too. Then Cardano to announce large and exciting deals in Ethiopia by Charles Hoskinson. It's pretty good to see Cardano actually picking up the pace here and actually getting done what they promised to get done in regards to their strategy for Africa. And they've been putting up a couple of updates kind of day after day here. It's looking pretty damn good. But here's a quote. Very soon, we should be able to announce the closing of deals in Ethiopia that are quite large and quite exciting. And I'm also very, very happy to see that Cardano is actually picking up the pace and keeping this done or getting this stuff done. Indeed, Africa has witnessed some of the largest levels of crypto adoption globally, with the region making up the largest share of retail crypto volume of transfers under $10,000. Hoskinson also briefly spoke of over 110 deals in his commercial pipeline, most of which he described as unviable due to the parties involved being unable to agree on economics that makes sense. However, it should be noted that most of these deals are located in the U.S. and Europe, suggesting that most of the organic interest in the platform primarily remains in the West, but it's just good to see that they're expanding. And yeah, I'm liking Cardano a lot right now, guys. I'm liking it a lot. Then Canada's shawarma restaurant chain tells the truth about Bitcoin. I, uh, I really don't actually know why people find this so important. But uh, these guys have said, we, look our, or we looked our financial advisor in the eye and told him gold will turn into a scam because of Bitcoin. He laughed and con con consentingly, oh, that's an easy word, came back with the 6,000 years argument. Here is why we think gold's years are numbered. And then I think it's a thread now. 
I didn't actually check it out further, but the point I think is kind of clear. You know, a lot of guys right now, even people who you don't traditionally expect to be in cryptocurrency, like restaurant owners or I guess franchise owners, I don't know. I don't know how big these guys are. Yeah, they know as well, right? And these guys, a lot of these these retail or I guess smaller companies are also looking to put some of their funds in or just some of their own money in. And the thing is, you're not really seeing that, right? But the general interest in crypto has gone up like crazy. And I, I think people will be buying it piece by piece, but in chunks, <laughs> piece by piece, but still in masses. Still my idea, though. Then, you can now buy $1 worth of Bitcoin on PayPal. I don't know if you actually could not buy small amounts before and if it's now changed, or if their idea was just to explain that you can buy crypto on PayPal and kind of express how multiple places will be getting to this soon. Again, if you think actually about the amount of money that's in all of these different places, it's at least to me kind of funny how already two, again, PayPal and Square here, are huge into crypto and quite a lot of them are just building it up at least with their with their positive stances like for example bank of america Citigroup. we've also heard a couple of things about wells fargo even and jp morgan i mean with their jpm coin all these banks have at least thought about crypto they're, they're they're in the space they've heard about it and i don't think it will be more than one year before at least all of them have will have done a statement on crypto saying whether they like it or not and whether or not they'll be supporting it or making one of their own <laughs> As maybe they're not going to buy any XRP, maybe they won't, but at least we'll know exactly what they're up to, and it's only going to be getting bigger. At least that's my idea. And I'm just trying to portray once more that these guys are buying in like maniacs, and it could also be that some of them are buying without even telling us. Could be. All right, then Bitcoin uptrending on the weekend, but not everyone wants to bet against the brute force of billionaires. Governments unleashing monstrous fiscal stimulus packages has the adoption of Bitcoin by institutional investors wrapping up, but it has only begun. And one question that's going to remain very, very important is how long will the pandemic take? Because if this vaccine, I'm not, I'm not trying to say those words out loud because I don't think YouTube likes that. If that thing were to really roll out right now and be positive for some people, you can, depending on if you take it, then I don't think that the pandemic will, will last as long, but you'll, you know... I don't want to say, I, I'm not going to say too much on that regard. I, let me let me peacefully keep quiet on that regard because there's also two heavy sides on that. So I, I shouldn't take any side in my objective <laughs> attempt at this crypto news right now today with all this pandemic stuff, which is highly subjective. You know, I, I think the, the shorter that, that one takes, the less fiscal stimulus we're going to be seeing and thus, from that perspective, also the least of a, of, a, of a necessity there is for these cryptocurrencies. But if it takes the whole of 2021, then, well, I think these companies that made the right bet of seeing crypto as the real only way out, because the national debt from the U.S. is going to be so ridiculously high. I think it's unfathomable, infathomable, unimaginable. That's the easiest one. All right. And then Ethereum developers... Activity transcends Bitcoins in 2020. Only thing you should know is DeFi is a freaking beast. And that's why people right now are so excited for everything that's being built on top of XRP, like Spark and Flare. Uh, but also why Ethereum right now has actually, at least for quite a lot of people, some priority over Bitcoin, at least to hoard it. And why the percentage of Ethereum being held right now in comparison to Bitcoin is only growing. Every single time I ask people, they've just said like, okay, but I'm, I'm also holding some Ethereum. I'm also going heavy on that one. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that Bitcoin is still proof of work and Ethereum is now transferring to proof of stake. And it has done a lot of the longevity for Ethereum, which was kind of limited before and right now has expanded to, to the moon. And yeah, people are really, really excited about that. But guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. We got more coming today. A lot of cool stuff has happened. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. And a comment, mm, comment, transcend down below if you've watched the video this far.